Welcome back, everyone. This is the first full interview of 2020, and you are in for a real treat. Because if you've been working with me or following me for a while, you have definitely heard me say that one of my favorite mantras lately is, the less I work, the more I make. And today, you're going to get to hear from Louisa Joe, who is kick-ass at just this. She works and helps people to scale their businesses faster with the right system so they can run multi-million dollar businesses with no full-time employees. That's a big deal. I'm sure that a lot of you listening want this. Um, she focuses on growing your business faster by doing less. We're going to learn a whole bunch of tips and tricks and strategies from her. So if this is your first time here, this is the Max Potential Habits Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Amanda Variantes. I'm the founder of NFA Coaching. And this is your place to come every week for tips, tricks, tools, inspirational interviews to help you optimize your habits so you can build a thriving business and love your life. So today we have on Louisa, who is the creator of the Employee to Entrepreneur System, which teaches people how to leave their day job and start their own six-figure business, their six-figure plus business working for themselves. She's helped thousands of students launch their own businesses that generate anywhere from 30 to 100K in less than a year. Her advice has been featured in numerous online and print publications, including Forbes, Inc., Entrepreneur, Success Magazine, and more. So she is badass. We're psyched to have her here. Welcome onto the show today. Oh, thanks so much for having me here. Yay, this is great. This is really exciting. I love it. So Louisa reached out to me through email and it took me a little while to get back to her. And when I read her bio, I was like, okay, perfect fit for the show. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get into the industry of helping people scale their businesses? Yeah. So it was just a series. I mean that, you know, Steve Jobs quote, you can only connect the dots looking backwards. It was one of those situations where, uh, a few years ago I was working at a digital advertising startup. And at that time, I remember there were some personal events that had happened that made me think, okay, I need to have more control and flexibility in my life. I need to folk think, think about starting my own business. And so I spent a few years uh, really trying to figure out what can I do? You know, what do I even have an idea? How does this even work? All of the, the common startup obstacles. And eventually about after three years realized, oh, okay, I can take my job skills and help people with their Facebook ads. And so that's how I started. I went online at the time it was Facebook groups, found people who were asking questions about this and just started answering their questions. And eventually that led to someone asking me, Hey, how can I hire you? You obviously know what you're talking about. And so I was like, Whoa, this is working. And so I, I did that. I built that business to the six figures before I left my job. And then what had happened was, as I was building that business and after I'd left my job, people came up to me and were asking me, hey, how'd you do it? How'd you make a certain amount of money before you left? How did you replace your income? How'd you do your job and your business? And I remember thinking, hey, it took me about three years of a lot of failures and not even knowing what I didn't know to figure it out. So I think there's a huge gap here that I can fill to help people with that. And so thus started my current uh, business, helping people go from employee to entrepreneur. I love it. You know, it's so in alignment with what I do. And I, a lot of the people I work with, that's the shift that they're making is that shift from the, the, the W2 mindset to the entrepreneur mindset. And how do you gear up for that? And, you know, it's a very different world working for someone else versus working for yourself. And it's part of the reason I love working with business builders is because of that drive and that mindset. But you said something I really wanted to highlight, you know, you were talking about more, more control and flexibility. Yes. So, you know, from your perspective, what are some of the benefits of building your own business? Versus There's working for someone so else. So <laughs> many. I, okay, so the you know top things, the most obvious things, right, which are just super important, having control over your own life. I just remember, you know, when I was doing the corporate thing, that I would have to ask for. It felt like every little thing, right? Uh, can yeah. I? take time off. If you, I mean, some managers were better, but there were certain jobs I had where they ha they were watching you by the clock. Like you had to be in by a certain time, couldn't leave before a certain time, things like that. And so it just felt like too, way too much, you know, let me be an adult 
and get, <laughs> just get the job done, which I did. Um, so there's that. There's the flexibility. So at this point in my business, I work a lot fewer hours than I did a few years ago. And that is something that I knew from day one that I wanted to be able to build, to be able to take time off, spend time with my family, uh, do just other things aside from working in whatever I was doing. And then there's also the just feeling of actually making more of a difference. So when I was working my jobs, I was, you know, doing reporting, things like that, where yes, technically, I guess you can say it was really important uh, and helps the company, but it didn't feel like I was really making a difference. Whereas nowadays, I see a client or I hear from a student who has done something awesome with their own business, and it's literally actually making a difference in their life. So I would say, I mean, there, there are a few other ones, but those are the top three that yeah. right away come to mind. That's awesome. Okay. So I, well, I, something that's big on the radar and I want, I know you have a lot of wisdom here because of the transition you made from working for someone else into your own business. What were some of the roadblocks you ran into? The fears, the doubts oh my gosh, that happens so for many. everyone I work with. <laughs> so many. I mean, and that's why I was really careful to note. It took me three years before I even figured out what I could do. And it was staring in front of me. I mean, the, the first fear I remember was, is this even possible? Because I didn't grow up around any entrepreneurs. The only thing I knew was the nine to five. And when I told, started talking to my parents about it, they were like, what are you talking about? You're crazy. You know, like, don't even be thinking about that. That's not a thing. And so just, it took me years before I just did so much research, saw so many other online businesses that I was like, okay, I'm starting to finally believe this is actually a real thing. It's not like a scam or a pipe dream. So that was a huge one. I will say another big one was just putting myself out there. So I'm an introvert. I'm a very private person. The idea, especially in the beginning of, oh, I have to write stuff online, right? I have to be visible. I have to potentially sell my services. Um, that just felt like, whoa, I'm not a used car salesman. You know, all of those uh, feelings definitely came up in a really big way for me. And I definitely overcoming those was one of the hardest things I had to do. Uh, yeah, that's big. And you know what you're saying in there, like the idea of belief, believing you can do it, seeing that it's possible, taking the actions, getting, getting over your own fears and blocks, but it makes sense. You know, when you come from a family doesn't, that doesn't have entrepreneurs or you don't have a lot of entrepreneurs in your life or those models. It's like, it's a scary endeavor, but it's so exciting. And there's so many bumps along the way. So many. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when you, how did you know when was the right time to go full-time entrepreneur and leave your job? Yeah. So for me, I'm super risk averse. So I definitely don't fit into that stereotypical image that we might have as a society of, you know, the burn the, the boats kind of entrepreneur. I was like, I, I knew I had a great job. I had gotten a great position, great salary. And I, it wouldn't be super easy for me to find something on par with that if I left and my business didn't work out. So even though, and I, I want to be careful to know this was while I was thinking every other day, it felt like I wanted to leave. So sometimes I would call my parents and say, you know what? I haven't made any progress in my business, but I just can't stand working here another day. I'm going to, I'm going to turn in my notice next week. And it was all hot, like, no, I would, I didn't really mean it, even though I wanted to, thankfully yeah. my mom would say things like, sure, you know, why don't you have something going before you leave first? And so what eventually happened was I didn't plan for it. I had set in my mind, look, if I make consistent uh, income three months in a row, if I make like $10,000, then okay, maybe I'll leave. I hadn't set a certain set thing because I didn't know how it would turn out. At yeah. that time, to be honest, I was still thinking, is this really going to be possible to replace my, my income full time? And so what happened was then as I started really like the, everything came together, the, those three years of testing, learning, working on my belief. And within about four months, I made over six figures in sales. And so after that, it was kind of like, well, I don't have any space uh, and my schedule to take on any more clients and I can't really do both. So, all right, I have some good cash in the bank. If I don't believe it now, it's just, I'm never going to believe it. So let me just go for it. That, yeah. so that was when I did that. 
Wow, that's awesome. So for you, it was it was more of a sense of of taking the leap, and you had enough of a cushion, and you just went for it. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, but but you put in. It sounds like yeah. you put in quite a bit of work up front, and, and made sure that you were stable. Exactly. And, like I yeah. put. I basically did every single thing I could to yeah. make sure. So I mean, I had the business set up. I had uh, like maybe three, four months of clients lined up. I had a program ready to go after to launch after I, I left. And I mean, personally, I also took care as much of my financial stuff as possible. Like I paid as much of my rent, like did like, yeah. you know, did all my healthcare stuff. Um, yeah. so everything possible. Yeah. You, I, that's one of the benefits of being risk averse, <laughs> it, but you know, it's interesting because I see people do it both ways, you know, where some people just go, I'm all in, I cannot yeah. take it anymore. I've got to take the leap. It causes different types of stress. Yes. than it does to, to do two jobs at the same time, you know, so yes. building your business in, uh, parallel to having your, you know, nine to five yeah. can be a different type of stress, but then leaving without the cushion is a different, you know, so it's all, it's all there. I think the common thread is that everyone is looking for freedom and doing what they love yes. and, and having the possibility of making an unlimited amount of income. Absolutely. It's just such a different reality, you know, so I left, I, it's weird. I've almost worked for myself my whole life. I, you know, I've almost, it's I, when I was a kid, I worked at Dairy Queen. <laughs> so I was, you know, I was a W2 employee then. And I worked at corn. I was the manager at Corning Revere and I had all these interesting jobs. And then I worked for my dad a lot, which felt kind of like entrepreneurship because he has, is a serial entrepreneur and always taught me, you know, bookkeeping and business mindset oh, and that awesome. kind of thing. Yeah. And then I went to grad school and that was almost, I would, I finished my two years of undergrad and then went straight into a PhD program. So it was like nine years in a row I was in school. Oh my gosh. And it's strange because you get a W-2 there. It's very, very, very low pay, oh. but it feels like you're an entrepreneur because you structure all your time. No one really oversees what you do besides, you know, coursework, you have certain requirements, but it was, I've, I've, I feel like I had the benefit in a lot of ways of for years having to structure my own time and be self-regulated and produce without, you know, it's like, it was up to me to make it happen. I I did all my lectures and those kind of things. So I had that. And when I left academia, I was like, okay, I'm all in. I similarly, I had saved up even with a really low income. I was really good at saving. So I saved up just a couple, like, I don't know, $5,000 maybe. Yeah. And I was like, I got to make my business fly immediately. Wow. You know, like, cause I, I thought, okay, worst case scenario, I'll go get a job somewhere and then I'll just build my business on the side. But mm -hmm. I didn't have an option really because in academia, you have to go all in and really oh. hit the job market hard. Yeah. And then you're all in. And so I was like, I'm not going to move. I don't want to get an academic job. So I'm just going to have to really hustle my ass off. <laughs> and so I did, you know, I went to like eight networking events a week and I just went all oh in and God. I got, and I Luckily, I lived on a very low income, so I was yeah. used to it already. Yeah, um, but it was terrifying. You know, there were parts of it that were terrifying. I can only imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, different. But but I love that we both have a similar outcome, and we're both yes. powerhouse women. So high I love fives it. to us. High five. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us more. Okay, so you sound like a master at systems. So I want to hear about that. Share with us, you know, what you found in helping people build systems so that they work less. And, and when you say work less, what, what does it really mean? Let's, let's clarify that. Yeah, I love that we're clarifying this. So when I say work less, I mean that if you are starting your business in mind, knowing it's not... It's not like you're, you're going to, you know, build something where you sit by the beach and drink margaritas all the time. Let's be right. clear about yes. that, right? But you're like, oh, I want to do something meaningful. I want to make a great income and I want to not be working maybe 24 seven or 40 hours a week, even whatever that is. If you start with that end goal in mind, then what you need to do is figure out, all right, well, what, like. I'm an engineer by training. So I'm always like, okay, let's talk about the numbers and things. So what's, what product are you going to look like? Is it one product or what product suite is going to bring you to that? Then it, you back into how many do you need to sell to make that income every month, quarter, year, whatever that looks like. And then you back into the, okay, so now that I have the baseline products in place of my business model and how I'm going to make the income I want to make working the hours I want to work delivering it, whether through a course or one-on-one -on -one or some, something in between, then it goes to, all right, 
how am I going to get people who find me to learn about my program and buy if they're interested? So that, that's a conversion system. Yeah. And when I say that, I'm talking about things like maybe a webinar or an email funnel or something like that. Then once you have that in place, you add in the traffic to, to drive people to that funnel that you've built. And so that could be through, uh, I mean, so many different channels, social media, YouTube, your own blog, paid traffic, um, Facebook ads, for example, right? So identifying which of those traffic sources might be the best for you, given your industry, given where you are, given the time, the resources you have to commit to whichever traffic source. And I usually recommend starting with one that you can really master. For me personally, I started with Facebook ads because that's what I knew as well. Um, but with each traffic source, there are things you have to know. Like for Facebook ads, it's, all right, what, how much can I afford to uh, spend on a lead? At this cost, what, based on you know, my conversion rates, how much am I going to get in return? And so different things for different traffic sources, identifying one, really nailing that. I mean, it took me months and months of testing before I really nailed down, all right, this targeting, this ad copy, this type of front end offer for my Facebook ads funnel will be profitable. And then scaling that to hit the income goal that you want. And so in terms of the other systems that really make this possible, it's the back end delivery and customer support. And so like, again, emphasizing in the beginning, in the first, I would say two years of my business, I worked so much. I worked like ridiculous. It felt like I was working all the time, you know? And, yeah. um, that's because I was really setting up the systems. I was setting up these funnels and I was creating procedures and processes for other people, my contractors to follow, to handle, for example, customer support questions or for my ads manager to know, okay, these are the things we need to focus on, so on and so forth. So that eventually what you have is, well, it's, this is my system for lead generation or multiple systems. This is my system for conversion. This is how we deliver it. And then once you have that and you've got the processes documented, it's a lot easier to outsource. And I mean, it's less work for your contractors as well, because it's really straightforward. There's no, you know, emergency situations where you have to put out unforeseen fires. And that, what that allows you to do is to outsource accordingly, decide what you're going to do and how much time you're going to spend, and then let the systems work. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Max Potential Habits podcast. If you're liking what you've heard, it would be so incredibly awesome if you would subscribe to the channel and leave a five-star rating and a written review. This helps me help more people while we grow our NFA community so we can rock it out together. For Max Potential Habits resources, go to nfacoaching.com where you can access all of my resources. There's free eBooks, PDF checklists, a journal template, a business mindset meditation kit, and so much more. Plus links to NFA Coaching on Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And if you're super serious about up-leveling, there's also a link to schedule a free consult to work with me in group or one-on-one coaching. Until next time, I hope you have a Max Potential Habits Day where you get inspired to do whatever it takes to transform into the most empowered version of yourself so you can lead a rich, thriving, kick-ass life and business.